like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 57 says the polynomial P of X equals X cubed plus 2X minus 11 has a real zero between which two consecutive integers. So at first glance, it might look like you want to try to solve this algebraically, um, but it is a cubic and those can be a little dicey to try to solve, uh, especially if you can't factor it. So what we can do instead is we don't actually have to find exactly what the zero is. We're just wanting to know where does it lie um, in between, you know, in between which two integers. So what we can do is we can set up a table um, and just start plugging in values. Okay, we don't really care exactly what the zero is. And just to uh, kind of refresh you, a zero is where the graph crosses the x axis. Okay, so in other words, it's the x-intercept. So the x-intercept is going to appear, like let's just graph some wild function here. This is not the graph of this particular function. Um, but let's just say you have like something that does something like this. Um, this zero right here is the point we're looking for. Now what's interesting about these zeros is um, we can find one uh, if the sign changes from negative to positive or vice versa. Like if, you know, if this was like negative 2 over here and here's negative 1 over here. If I notice that at negative 2 my function is below the x-axis and at negative 1 the function is above the x-axis, the only way a polynomial function can do that is if we cross over the x-axis and therefore we would have a zero in between those two numbers. So we're just going to uh, plug in um, some values into this function. Uh, and we'll just start, you know, we shouldn't have to try too many here. We'll just go from 0 to 5. So those are going to be the values we plug into the calculator. We're going to evaluate each one of these. Um, so yeah, let's get, let's get to plugging in, in, in these numbers to see uh, what we have. So I've got, got, got my calculator ready. I'm going to start by plugging in 0. So I've got 0 cubed plus 2 times 0 minus 11. I'm going to type that in here and I get negative 11. Okay, so my function is below the x-axis here. If I type in 1, okay, 1 cubed would be 1 plus 2 times 1 minus 11, I get negative 8. So while it's possible that there's a 0 there, um, like if it crossed over and then came back up, and, uh, uh, or, or if it crossed over and then came back down, rather, and went back down, that's possible that there's 1 in here, but we can't say for sure. Okay, we don't see the sign change here, so we can't say with certainty whether or not there's a zero there. Now I'm going to plug in 2, 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 minus 11, and I get 1. Okay, so now because I have a sign change here, okay, I've got a sign change, meaning I went from a negative to positive. Okay, the sign change uh, indicates... Uh, that we cross over the x-axis. Like if we go from negative, a negative value which is below the x-axis to a positive value which is above the x-axis, um, it means we crossed over the x-axis, okay? And if we're going to cross over the x-axis, we have an x-intercept, and therefore we have a zero. So it's likely that our answer here is going to be B, but let's just keep this going to make sure that I didn't make any typos or, you know, something else kind of funny happens. Uh, so I'm going to type in 3, 3 cubed plus 2 times 3 minus 11, and I'm getting 22. So again, we don't see a sign change there. Uh, if I type in 4, so 4 cubed plus 2 times 4 minus 11, um, I get 61, okay? And if I type in 5, I'm not really expecting a sign change here, but 5 cubed plus 2 times 5, uh, minus 11, and I'm getting a 124. So the only time I have a sign change here is from negative 8 to 1, and that's going to be in between 1 and 2, so our answer is going to be B. Uh, if you have a similar problem like this, and it's asking, you know, where's the real zero, you want to look for the sign change. It doesn't necessarily need to change from negative to positive. It could go from positive to negative, but either way, you're looking for some evidence that you're crossing over the x-axis. Uh, so yeah, that's it for number 57. Uh, thanks for watching and y'all have a great day.